Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to check out my Instagram listed down below. I post lots of fun crafts over there, so be sure to check it out. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to do print then cut labels. We're going to use Canva to design these and then print and cut them through Cricut Design Space. This is super fun and super easy. These are great ways to make your own customized items, whether it's candles, soaps, wine, whatever you want. You can really use this concept on so many different products. And I made this fun candle today so that I could show you guys how to do that. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. I'm going to show you how to make this candle label and print it and cut it using your Cricut. It's super easy, really fun, and these are great for all sorts of reasons. They're great for like wedding favors, but also baby shower gifts, all sorts of things. So you can really personalize these to whatever kind of event you want them for. I'm making mine as some favors for a wedding, so I'm going to keep it pretty simple. But let's start at the very beginning, and I'm going to show you guys how to make this. The first thing that you'll need to do is to find whatever images you want to use. And because our candle is mahogany and balsam, I of course thought of pine trees. So I found these really pretty watercolor pine trees from Creative Fabrica. Now I have an all access membership, but I'll link it down below so you guys can grab one as well. You can get anything off of their site for free included in that all access membership. So all I did was downloaded them and extracted them. And then I'm going to go to Canva. Canva is a great website and you can actually use this for free. Over here in Canva, you can start a free account and you can do everything for free that we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is choose custom size. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to measure my candle. And when I measured, I found that about a 2.5 wide by about a two inch sticker is best if I want to fit quite a bit of info and still have it kind of stand out. So what I'm going to do is change the PX, which stands for pixels, to inches. Once I've done that, I can put my width in at 2.5 and my height in at 2. Now, depending on what candle you use will depend on the size of your sticker. So just make sure to measure and you can put any measurements in here that you want to. Then simply click create new design. Now it's going to look very large here, but when we print it out, it won't be this big. So don't worry. Now I am going to leave my background white for this because I just find that I like a white background on a candle sticker. But again, you can do whatever you want. If you want it to match the colors of your event, if you just want to make some labels for your house, whatever you want to do, this is a great way to do this because you have a lot more options when it comes to the coloring and the transparencies and things of your design. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I have my folder open that I have all of my pine trees in. And I'm just gonna select a few of the pine trees that I want to use in this design. Now I like to grab a couple of different colors and a couple of different styles. And I just grab all of them at once and then I drag them into my Canva and I drop them. Now you can see I've already uploaded some of them and that's okay. I just tested this and wanted to show you guys the finished product before we got started. Ours will look a little bit different than what I made originally but we're still gonna use pretty much the same concept. So once it's loaded all of your designs in, and it may take a minute because they are pretty fancy designs. They're, they're a big lot of information. So give it just a few seconds to load all of your designs and you'll see that they'll pop up on your screen and you can move them around. Now I wanna do two layers of these trees because I want the background to have like a lighter layer of trees and then a darker layer of trees. So all I'm gonna do is just sort of move my trees around and just arrange them however I want to. Now let's say that we want this little tree here to be in front of the tree to its left. This is very similar to Cricut Design Space. If you right click on it, you can go ahead and bring this to the front. So now that tree sits in front of your other tree. You can do that to any of the trees that you want to and kind of design it however you want. Now I do want a little bit of white space at the top because I want it to have a little bit of a horizon. So all I'm doing is just kind of placing my trees wherever I want them and I'm going to actually send this one all the way to the back. Then I'm just going to kind of move my trees around and I do want it to be pretty full but I also want to have some white space between them and I do want them to be at different heights. That way we can kind of see a little bit more of a dimension 
to our design. And I do want to go all the way to the edge with these. So I just sort of play around, move things around, figure out like what order I want the trees to sit in because I don't necessarily want them to be like the same color next to each other. So I'm going to put like this bright green one over here and I'll make this one little short guy and then I'll move this kind of darker green one up here and I'll make him a little bit shorter than that one. And then I'll do this one a little taller and then we'll come in with this little scraggly looking guy. And I'm gonna actually move him forward. So I'm gonna send this one backward and we'll just kind of play around with it and just see what works. And it's okay if it like cuts off some of our tree, we do want it to have a little bit of dimension. So once we have that back set of trees kind of set up the way that we want them to, we can just simply, just like Cricut Design Space, draw a square and select all of our images. Now, like I said, I want this one to be a little bit more transparent than the front so that it looks a little dimensional. Up here in the upper right hand side, you'll see that there is this little checkerboard and this is your transparency. This is something that you can't really do with Design Space when you're in there. So that's why I like to use Canva for this kind of stuff. So I wanna make these pretty transparent. I wanna probably go about 50, 49, somewhere in there. And I think that looks really, really good. I think that's like an appropriate color. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add back some of the trees. And you can use different trees, you can use whatever trees you want to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them a little bit more dimension and I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger so that they look like they're sitting closer to the front of our design. And you can use whatever trees you want. You, I'm kind of pulling some of the ones that I had put in earlier. But again, it's really up to you and whatever trees you would like to use. Now, the cool thing with this is that you can kind of change the color look because these are going to be less transparent. I'm going to add a little bit of transparency to them, but they're not going to be quite as transparent as our first set of trees. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and send this one backward. I want it behind that tree. And I want to make sure that I don't really see much of the um, little trunk in these front section of trees, just personal preference. It's really up to you and like how you want it to look. But I think for me, I want to not see quite as much of my trunks. So again, just kind of add whatever trees you want to and you can kind of just play with them. Now, if you choose send to back, it's going to put it behind all of these trees as well. So you just want to use the word send backwards or bring to for bring forward. That'll move it just one layer back or forward and you can kind of just mess around with it, see what you like, see how you want it to look. So again, I'm just kind of playing with it and I think I'm gonna use, uh, where's that little scraggly tree? There's a little scraggly tree. We'll put the little scraggly tree right here and that'll hide all of the pieces from the back. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna select each of my trees and I can do that by holding down shift and clicking each tree. I wanna make sure each tree is selected and not the back trees because I wanna change the transparency on these front trees so that they're not as bright and dark. So you can see here that I'm just gonna adjust them. And remember, our back trees are about 40. So I do wanna do these ones just a little bit darker. I don't wanna go too dark because I do wanna be able to see the wording, but I think that looks pretty gosh darn good. Now from here, you can definitely go through and adjust and change things if you want to. I feel like the trees might be a little bit too crowded for my taste. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take out a couple and move some things around. So you can absolutely do that. Just sort of shift things where you want to, kind of figure out where you want them to go. I just think they felt a little bit crowded once I kind of got everything placed where I wanted to. So I think I'm going to adjust them and I really don't mind being able to see some of the trunks of the front or the back trees. So what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and get rid of like this little guy because I felt like he made it feel a little too crowded. I think that looks a little bit better. I like having a little white, but again, you can really just play with this, whatever you like, there's no wrong way. So just figure out how you want it to look and you can go from there. Now we are going to add a few little elements and the great thing is you have this elements button and you can kind of search for different things. So if you just want to use a line, just search the word line and you're going to find a bunch of line options. You can use whatever style you want that will match your design. 
I'm just going to go with this plain line here and then I need to turn it so that it goes up and down. So I'm just grabbing that little like swirly guy here, the arrows, and I just grab him so that he goes up and down. Now it's a little thick for me, so you can actually go over here to where it says line style up in the upper left hand corner and you can change the line weight to a little bit smaller. And if you want, you can turn on rounded edges. Again, really up to you, however you want it to look, whatever you wanna do, it's up to you. But this is just the style that I'm gonna go with to show you how to make this. Now, another cool thing that they offer are text options. And what's pretty fun about these is there are some that are free to use for free members. So this white Christmas one is the one that I ended up using and it's free. So if you're not a pro member, you can still use this. So all you'll need to do is simply select this. And I got rid of the I'm dreaming of portion here because we're not going to use it. Then I just changed the words white Christmas to mahogany. And then I used the and. And then I hit enter and put balsam. Now, obviously it looks pretty cramped. What I wanna do is expand out my size here and then I'm gonna resize it down so that it fits within my candle label. Now you can make this as big or as small as you want. You can really do whatever you want with it. And I think I'm gonna get rid of the and. I don't think I like that. I think it looks kinda off. So let's leave that off and then I'm just gonna kinda, I like to shrink my text box down and then expand it so that I can kinda see what it looks like and how I want it to fit. I think that looks really, really cute. And I think it's like the kind of style that we're going for. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of information. So because I'm gonna be reusing a white barn candle from the Bath and Body Works, I wanna put some information on here that they have on their label so that people sort of know what this candle is. You know, and you can put information on yours, whether you hand make it, whether you're buying a candle from somewhere, but it's always good to put a little bit of information on here. So what I like to do is I'm just gonna put, add a little bit of body text. So that's right here in the text screen. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna put what weight it is. So I'm gonna put net weight and it's seven ounces. Now, again, this is all personal preference. You do not have to do this, but I like to just add that little bit of information. Now I am gonna change the font and just like Cricut Design Space, the font changing is right in that upper left-hand corner. If you click on that, you'll find a bunch of different fonts. Now again, you're going to see some that have little crowns next to them, but you choose ones without crowns if you have a free account. So you can kind of make whatever you want. I think this Alice one is really nice. I also like um, Arapy is fun. So just find ones that maybe don't have that crown and those are gonna be like your perfect fonts. Now for this one, I like something simple and easy to read. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the lower corner. Now sometimes if you copy and paste your words, it might help to move them because sometimes it puts them in a weird spot. So what I do is I right click and I copy and then I use control V and I paste and then I just kind of move my original text box back where I had it. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm gonna make this side, which is gonna say made with, and we're gonna use essential oils. And then I'm gonna add the burn time, and that's approximately, if I could type, we'd be doing great. So this is gonna burn approximately 20 to 45 hours. Now again, this is all personal preference. You don't have to add this information. I just like to, because I think it makes it look more professional. And then I'm gonna just size this down a little bit so that it fits within our design. The next thing we'll do is add our next set of text. So again, I'm just gonna use Control V and Control C here to copy and paste. So this side, I'm gonna put the um, what it's included in it. So it's gonna say fragrance. If I could spell, we'd be doing great. That's the cool thing, this has um, spell checker. So fragrance, which it still says is wrong. Fra Sometimes it doesn't work, so you just have to change it yourself. So fragrance notes, and we will hit enter and we'll put those in. So we have juniper berry. I'm gonna put a comma and then hit enter again. And then the next one is fresh balsam, comma, enter again. And then the last one is mahogany wood. And apparently typing is just not going well for me today. So then I'm just gonna put a period there. 
So that is our fragrance notes. And then the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to add a little um, note from the bride and groom. So all I'm going to do is just put love and uh, put our names. So we'll just do Corinne and Brian. And I think I will add a little like heart instead of writing out the word love. So over in elements, let's just find a little heart. So all you need to do is just search for the word heart and you'll get a bunch of heart options. So you can choose whatever kind of heart you want, whether you want kind of a stylized one, a sketchy one, whatever you want it to look like. And I'll go ahead and size it down. I like this little sketchy one. I think he'll look cute with our watercolor. Now I don't want it to be pink, so I can just change the color of it over here and I'm just gonna make it black. That way it matches kind of everything else that we have on our design. And I think I'm gonna move it over a little bit. And you can kind of just play with it and see like where everything lines up, get everything lined up really well. The other nice thing with this is that you'll see that there'll be grids, little like lines that come up. That shows me where center is on my um, sheet here. So it's super easy to line anything that you want to up. So I think this looks really good. This is gonna be a super cute candle label. So the next thing we need to do is make sure to download this. So what you'll do is click on share and right down here it says download. You wanna download this as a PNG and you don't need to select any of this other stuff because that's all pro stuff and you won't be able to use it anyways. And we don't want it to have a transparent background anyways because we don't want it to cut around our words. So go ahead and click the word download. Now this may take a moment to kind of process through its downloading, but do not worry. It will download beautifully and it's super easy to work with in Design Space once it's ready. So I'm gonna save this in to Print and Cut and I'm gonna call this my candle label. And hit save. Now let's head over to Design Space and I'll show you guys how to load this. So here in Design Space, what we're gonna do is click the word upload. You're going to choose upload image and then browse. You're gonna find the folder that you saved it in. So we know that we saved it in to our print and cut folder. And then we know that we called it candle label and it should give us a preview of it because it's a PNG. So go ahead and select it. And it's gonna just ask you what kind of image it is. I just always select complex, but we're not gonna do anything in this next screen. Just go ahead and click apply and continue. You wanna save it as the print and cut image, which is the image to the right. Then click upload. Now, once it uploads fully and shows into your uploaded folder, select the image and add it to the canvas. The first thing that we'll do is just double check our sizing because it does not always keep the correct sizing. So that's something to keep in mind. You can see here that it definitely didn't, it made it much bigger. So what I want to do is I'm going to resize this so that we know that the width is 2.5 and then the height is 2. So here you go, perfectly resized. Now again, this is going to look really, really small because it's only showing about 50% of the size. But don't worry, it will be fine. The next thing that I want to do is try to fit as many of these as I can on a sheet. So I'm going to open up a shape and I'm going to open up a square. Now, Cricut's print and cut size limitations are 6.75 by 9.25. I'm gonna hit this little unlock button here on the lower left-hand corner. And up at the top, I wanna change my width to 6.75 and my height to 9.25. Then I wanna right-click on this and send it to the back. Now you'll see that it goes behind my label and I can move my label around on to my image. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my label and you'll see now I have two labels. I'm gonna duplicate my label again and now I have three labels. So all I wanna do is get these pretty close together. They don't have to be like right on top of each other but I do want them relatively close together because I wanna fit as many as I can within this design. Now you'll see that you can actually get these nice and lined up as well. So what I can do is I wanna use a line and I want to align the tops. So you can do that for all of your lines as you go, or you can just make one line and just simply duplicate that line of two, because we're obviously not going to fit another sticker over here, but we can actually make something to fit in there as well if we want to. So I'll show you guys a really quick little like thing that you can do 
to just fill in some more space and that way you're not going to waste a lot of sticker paper and you can use those stickers maybe somewhere else in your event or something like that. So what I want to do is let's go to upload and let's choose upload image and I'm going to click browse. So in my print and cut images, I have those watercolor pine trees. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one of those pine trees and I want to pick one that maybe doesn't look like it's got a lot of feathering to the sides of it because it's going to be hard for Cricut to cut it out if it has that. So I think that looks pretty good. We'll use this one. I'm going to click apply and continue again. You don't want to do anything or change anything to these because they're just PNGs. So we're going ahead and click upload and then we can add this tree to our canvas. Now again, you can use whatever trees you want. It's really up to you and how you want to do it. But this is a great way to kind of take up some of this extra space and be able to use that little tree somewhere else in your event. So now obviously this tree is gigantic. So let's just change the width to one just so that we can see him and see what we're doing. Now I'm going to make him as big as I can to fit on to our printable. I think that looks like it'll fit pretty good. And then I'm just going to duplicate him a couple of times just to fill in the space. Now, again, you can come through and fill it in however you want, do whatever you want. But these little pine trees I thought would be perfect. You could add them to your invites, like the outside of your invites. You can do a whole theme along these little pine trees. Now, yes, I could fill some more space, but I think this is going to be pretty good for what I want it to do. So now our next thing that we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this square. I don't need it. I don't want it. I just need it gone. I want to select everything that is on my page and I am going to go ahead and attach it. By attaching it, it tells Design Space not to move my images so that I can keep them exactly the way I have them laid out and it won't move them around and mess it up. Now I do always double check to make sure that this fits within our print and cut limitations. So it's 6.644 by 8.222. So that's perfectly fine. It'll fit just fine. Go ahead and click Make It. Now what you're going to see here is that we do have two squares. This first square, the smaller one, will not print. It is just showing you where the edge of your images are because now you can move your designs on Design Space and it will change where it puts the registration box. This one doesn't have a lot of options for movement because it is so large. But if you had a lot of smaller images, you could easily just move these around and fit them however you wanted to on your make it screen. So it's like editing your regular cut mats, but now you can do it with print and cut. Now we can't move individual items because we did attach them. So just keep that in mind, but I prefer to do it on the canvas versus after hitting make it. So once we have everything exactly how we want it, go ahead and click continue. Now this is where you're going to want to decide what kind of paper are you going to use. I am going to use Starcraft printable vinyl, which is such a great product, super easy to use, really high quality. So what I want to do is I'm going to click send to printer. We need to do a few settings over here just to make sure everything prints out really, really well. Now, one thing I'm going to point out, you'll see here that it's got everything really messed up over here. This has been doing this a lot. And when it does this, just close out your print setup and click send to printer again. Typically it will fix itself and it's totally fine the second time. I think it just overthinks itself and gets confused. Now for this, I'm going to use my Epson ET2720, which is my inkjet printer. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that my bleed is on and I want to use my system dialog. System dialog is going to open up a really nice set of settings for your printer. So go ahead and click print. This is not going to send it to your printer right away because it is going to open up those settings so that we can take a look and change up some things. Once it has opened your printer dialog settings, what I want you to do is double check that you have the correct printer selected because sometimes it will select like the printer you used previously. So if you have multiples, just double check your printer. So it does have my ET2720 selected. What I need to do now is click on preferences. I always double check, make sure my document size is correct, and I make sure it's set to portrait. Now for my printer, the plain paper works fantastic. So I don't usually change my paper setting, but some people will need to. So you may want to do some test printing before you really commit to printing a specific design. The next thing I want to do is change my print quality to high. 
I always make sure that color is selected and then I do one more setting, which is go under more options. I want to turn off my high speed print. When you get lines in your print, it's typically because the high speed print is on. So what it does is it really rushes through your print and so it skips a couple little spots. So if you want it to be really, really nice, turn off high speed print. Then all I have to do is click OK and click print. Once everything has printed out, we need to select our cut setting. Um, I do find that I like to cut this on the medium cardstock setting. I like to cut all the way through my paper. But really, you're going to want to do some test cuts depending on what kind you're using. Because I'm using the Starcraft and I'm not going to put any um, laminate over this, the medium cardstock works just fine for me. But depending on what you're using, you're going to want to just do a little bit of test cutting to see what works best. We're now ready to load the Cricut. So what I have is our printed sheets. These are the Starcraft. And what I want to do is place this directly on to my mat. And I want to try to get it as straight as I can. And then I want to just make sure that it's placed on here and I want to make sure that it's well held down. I'm going to go ahead and load this. Now what it's going to do is it's going to come through and read all of the lines on our design and then it will cut around everything, but first it has to read those registration marks. Now, a lot of people have trouble with that. Um, if you're having trouble, there's a lot of little hacks you can do, and I'll talk you through some of those. One hack that works pretty well is tracing your registration mark with a Sharpie. You can also turn off the lights in your room or actually create more light. I like to use my cell phone flashlight and I shine it along the carriage while it reads. That seems to work really well for me, and you can see my room's pretty bright. Another thing that you can do is some scotch tape either around your lines or you can actually cover your sensor with scotch tape, which I don't necessarily recommend, but it could be done. Now, like I said, I don't usually have issues with it reading, so I'm not super like worried about it and I don't usually use a lot of the hacks, but those are some of the options that you have if it doesn't read. Now, obviously mine reads fine, so it's going to go ahead and cut everything out. So now that it's done, I always double check my cut before I take my paper off. So I just make sure, now it didn't cut all the way through, but that's okay. Because as long as it cut the sticker, we're not really worried about it cutting through. I do prefer a die cut sticker, but if I can't get that, I'm okay with it. I will double check and see how these cut because it looks like they cut really, really well. So we'll take a look and see. Yes, these cut perfectly, so I'm not really worried about it doing a full cut through. Now I will say the cut is super off. I've calibrated a million times and I've just at this point given up. So let's go ahead and close this guy up. I'll take these off the mat and let's apply it to our candle. So here is our candle. I've left the other label on it, but you can absolutely take that off. Really simple to take these off. Just warm them up a little bit and they come right off. But what we're gonna do is add one of our stickers over to our candle. So I'm just gonna peel one off. And again, these did not cut fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and place our sticker down. Now, one thing I like to just kind of use the bottom for centering. And I like to put my candles a little bit, like my labels, just a little bit down from the top. I like to leave a little more space up there just for aesthetic purposes, but there you go. There is the label all completed, super easy. And you can really use these little pine tree stickers kind of anywhere. They might be a little too big for the lid, but they might fit. Uh, let's see. Oh, it fits perfectly actually. So this could be really, really cute on your lid. So you can really use those pine tree stickers if you want to. And then it's just a regular old candle and you can get these anywhere. The Dollar Tree even has candles. So it's a great way to make these little fun favors for events and somebody can take home a really pretty smelling candle. You can also have like a local candle maker do these, make your own candles. There's so many options and so many ways to use these types of labels. They're great on wine bottles. They're great on hand sanitizers, really anything 
that you can think of, you can make a cute little label for and use it for a favor. If you guys have any questions about this or any of our other crafty things, please let me know in those comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And if you've ever made your own labels, let me know what you like to label. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting. Thank you.